Hello, my name is Crispin and welcome to Poker Room Review, your guide for live poker rooms all across the world. In each episode, we review a live poker venue, discussing the important things you need to know when planning your next poker destination. In each episode, we review a range of characteristics, including location and access, game options, service and experience, and rake and rewards. We also discuss any rules, quirks, and issues relating to each location. Today, we are in the Georgian capital of Tbilisi at the Casino Ajara. Now, before I go on, stay tuned to the very end because there's much to discuss about poker in the country of Georgia and none of what you find online is accurate. But launching straight into it, category one, location and access. Georgia is a beautiful country located just south of the Caucasus Mountains right between Europe and Asia. It sits between the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea and is right off the normal tourist agenda for most people and yet you don't know what you're missing unless you come here. Boasting incredible weather, beautiful wine, stunning food and not many tourist traps, Georgia is a country you really should consider traveling to just for your own benefit particularly if you're more of an adventurous outdoor type because there are remote things to explore all around this part of the world. It's also incredibly ancient. Indeed, caves in this area trace human evolution with permanent settlement 1.8 million years ago. When you do land in the Tbilisi airport, you will be overwhelmed by the amount of gambling advertising in the terminal, including on the free Wi-Fi, which is sponsored by the local casinos. It seems as though the entire tourist market is geared towards bringing in foreign gambling dollars, including Casino Ajara, which is the topic of today's review. Now, if I were you, I would organize my transfers before you fly in, preferably through the hotel that you choose to stay at or even through the Airbnb owners, because once you arrive at the airport, you will be overwhelmed by the amount of people offering you rides at exorbitant prices, including individuals who seem to be official. Maybe they are, but the prices are excessive. You can get it cheaper, by getting people to meet you at the airport. The other thing for you to consider is a SIM card when you arrive, because not every country, including our own, is serviced here in Georgia. So when you do come in, think about your internet needs. If you do need a SIM card, you can buy one in the malls in the city. I would recommend waiting until you do get into town before you get one. It's still gonna be about 30 US dollars, so it's not super cheap, but it's much more affordable than buying it at the airport. The theme here is, prepare to get yourself out of the airport. Now the commute in takes about 20 minutes, so not too difficult. And when you are in the middle of Tbilisi, there are many transportation options available. Definitely use the subway, it is remarkable. A country like this has no justification for having such an efficient train system. It only costs about 60 US cents per ride and you can go anywhere in the major areas. You can visit all of the significant casinos and most hotels. It's much better catching the train than it is a bus because the buses can get extremely packed, particularly during busy times, and they stop at every individual stop regardless of whether people need to get on or off, so things to be rather slow. When you do arrive at Casino Ajara, and again, you can get there via the Metro subway, you will have to bring your passport the first time you arrive. They will sign you up at the front desk, give you a card, and from that point on, you use that for everything. In short, Tbilisi is actually quite an underrated city. There's a lot to do here. It's very attractive. The weather is extremely agreeable. and The food is fantastic. Getting to and from the airport, as long as you plan that out, is fairly straightforward, and Casino Ajara is centrally located. So for location and access, three and a half stars. Category two, game options. This is where things come off the rails a little bit. Despite being the best branded casino in the entire city, Casino Ajara still only has two live poker tables. Both are cash games, one is PLO, the other is Texas Hold'em, and they play kind of big, $5, $10 US blinds, 500 US dollar minimum buy-in. So if you're just a casual player showing up, definitely not for you, not, uh, tournament players at all, no tournaments going, so it's just those two games. The good news is they get up every single night. So quite often when we do reviews, the bigger games will only get up on weekends, if that, 
well, this is a game set at $5, $10 blinds. And so if you are a bigger life uh, cash player, this is definitely something you might consider while you're in the city. Also, even though it's only one table each, it's not like there's huge lists. Uh, when I was there, the lady managed to tell me when the games would get up, how long we'd have to wait, help you with the organizing a seat. So if you just show up around the starting time, you should be fine. You might be waiting for a little while, but, but not the whole night. Still, obviously, two live cash tables, only running in the evenings, only at the high stake levels, no tournaments. Uh, of course, this is not a major draw. So game options, two stars. Three, service and experience. Now, people who watch this channel will be aware that there is one big bugbear that we have, and that is smoking. There is almost no excuse for a establishment in the 21st century to put the health of their patrons and staff deliberately at risk with this practice. It should be stamped out entirely. However, I'm a little bit more forgiving in a country like Georgia, which does have smoking in every casino, and that's because they were occupied by the Soviet Union for so long. They've only recently awoken to the health effects of smoking and gone through these kind of revolutions that everyone else has had a long time to adjust to. But in Georgia, it's especially acute because unlike other establishments, which usually has smoking out on the main floor or behind a rail, people can smoke right at the table. That means if you've got cars in front of you, the person next to you can be puffing away, blowing smoke, hitting the ashtray, the whole works. Now, if you are a smoker and you like playing poker at the table and you wanna play a high stakes live cash game, this might be your poker mecca, but for everyone else, Keep that in mind, it's a huge problem and it was a big deterrent for me to spend any amount of time at the tables. Uh, beyond that though, it is a pretty good offering given the limitations of only having two games running. Both tables do have card shuffling machines inbuilt. The hands are dealt extremely efficiently. There is a floor manager just for those two tables, probably reflecting the amount of money that gets passed along. You can buy in direct with US dollars. You don't need to transfer in and out of the local currency at all. And all of the chips can be done at the table. The person that runs the games is extremely helpful. Uh, she lets you know when the games will be running, what times are available, tries to organize you a seat, and the seats themselves are extremely comfortable, much nicer than what you find out on the main gaming floor, indicating they kind of do want to look after the players. They're not just an afterthought. The facilities are also good. There is uh, internet, there is bathrooms available, and there is a dining area with a large bar not 10 steps away from the table. So overall, it's okay. Uh, we we'll normally give it sort of a three, three and a half stars. However, given the uh, abundance of nicotine that's just a plume around you the whole time, uh, for service and experience, two stars. Four, rake and rewards. This is where things are extremely good. Much better than average, actually. They have a bad beat jackpot. It wasn't terribly high when uh, we were there, but it was probably just because it had gone off fairly recently. And there is other high hand bonuses as well, but the rake for this 510 game is 2%, minimum qualifier 100 US dollars. So any pot that is smaller than that isn't raked at all. It does have a fairly high cap of five big blinds, but you really do need to have a big pot to get anywhere near that. 2% is a excellent rate with a bad beat jackpot and bonuses on top of that. That is incredible, especially given that this is such a limited game offering. You've only got two tables running. Normally at an establishment like this, there would be no benefit at all. If there was, it'd be some kind of uh, chip race or cash game hourly reward, something like that, a, a rate back offering, something that rewarded you for a long period of play at a relatively small establishment. Normally, these kinds of rewards are for rooms that are vastly bigger than this one. So given the size, the rake offering is excellent. The rewards are excellent. There really is nothing that you could ask for more than what they provide. So for rake and rewards, five stars. In terms of rules and quirks, everything seemed to run pretty normally, but because of the amount of smoke, I was kind of deterred from spending the days or week long period I normally spend to get 
across absolutely every possible thing that could happen. Uh, nothing like that this time around. It was kind of a short stay. Also, language is a real barrier in Georgia, unlike a lot of other venues. People aren't speaking tons of English. The dealers can, but the players are speaking Georgian or Russian. They're not speaking much English, and so you have to be aware that you won't necessarily know what people are saying at the table, and it can be difficult to have in-depth conversations about the way that the game runs. Now, at this point, I do just want to quickly mention we've published a new book called Poker Stoic, How to Control Tilt and Make Good Decisions. So if you're in a difficult game with people speaking different languages and surrounded by nicotine and you want to control your emotions and focus on the decision at hand, this involves 200 maxims that I use to manage my mental state whenever I'm about to play poker at the game or indeed after suffering a bad beat or having a bad experience. Afterwards, this gets me through it and makes sure that the next major decision, I'm not still steaming, thinking about the previous hand and it'll do the same for you. So check it out. The link is in the description below. It will help your game, promise you that, and support the channel as well. All right, now at this point, I want to discuss the poker scene in Georgia. It may be different in other cities. I know there's at least one room in Batumi you haven't been to, but in the capital, Tbilisi, if you search online for poker, you'll get a large number of rooms come up, either an Atlas or ChatGBT, and it'll kind of give the impression that there's a lot of poker available. Well, we went to four major casinos, all of which had previously been advertised as having poker, and only Casino Ajara had any, and again, it had two rooms. So we went to the Shangri-La, we went to Ajara, we went to the Ambassadori, uh, we went to the Club Iveria, none of them have poker. So poker in Georgia, pre-COVID might have been a lot bigger, but now it is not a scene it doesn't exist so just keep that in mind if you're in georgia already and you want to play a higher stakes game and you don't mind the smoking then yes casino ajara is there for you but don't treat georgia at the moment like a major poker destination or at least the capital tbilisi again i know batumi does have some poker rooms they may have some impressive service offerings we don't know yet however don't come to the capital for poker. It's just not a thing. Now, there are many other reasons to come to Georgia. If you love your history, if you like orthodox kind of artwork in uh, churches, if you love wine, if you love the outdoors, if you love greenery, if you love to go mountaineering, Georgia is a stunning location, but it's just not well reflected in the tourist map. Keep that in mind. Don't believe what you find online. It just isn't true. Okay, so have you been to Casino Ajara? Is there anything we've missed that you'd like to include? Please leave comments down below. It'll help everyone else who wants to play there. Also, have you been to Tbilisi to play poker? Is the scene different from how I've described? Are there any rooms that we've missed? And how about the rest of the country? Is the scene in Batumi wildly different? Would you recommend people go there instead? I'm sure everybody watching this would appreciate your views in the comment section. If you found value in this content, please hit the like and subscribe button because it's the only way that YouTube will know that people appreciate it. And indeed, if you have access to any Facebook groups or poker forums, consider sharing these videos because getting more views is the only way that we can create more content. Hopefully you found value in this. We enjoy discussing it. We will see you next time. Goodbye.